Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Game Changer. Good, Good morning. morning. Terrific Tuesday. That's my declaration today. Hey Amen. Terrific Tuesday. I love it. I receive it, walk in it, join you in declaring it. Terrific Tuesday. What's your declaration today? What do you believe today? So maybe if you're watching this on YouTube or Facebook live, you can throw them in the comments and we can see some of the declarations today. What do you believe God for today, this Tuesday? And if you're <clears throat> listening to this and uh, later on and you can't comment, just say it out loud. Shout it out loud. Just say it to yourself. Say today is this day. And um, just declare it. Really speak it. The, bi the Bible says that the power of life and death is in the tongue. And then we'll eat the fruit thereof. <clears throat> How many times have I eaten the fruit of just the stinking thinking that came out of my mouth? How many times have I opened my mouth and said some things that, you know, I was feeling and then had to eat that fruit, right? <clears throat> We're talking about what to do when you want to quit. And uh, I thought it was a really good show yesterday. I, you know what? I made it through. I didn't quit. I paused, but I didn't quit. You said you said if we you said we could pause, right? Yes. Uh -huh. I wish we could rewind sometimes, but a pause to suffice. Rewind and delete. Control Alt Delete. Mm -hmm. um, those moments where, especially if you said there's power of life and death in the tongue, so true. Like sometimes as it's coming out of your mouth, do you ever wish you could like suck it back in? Like, no. Yes. Control Alt Delete. I think control alt delete. What well, that doesn't do what you say it does. I don't, I don't know. It does. Control does it? Does it delete it? No. It's just delete. I think control control alt delete does something else. I'm not really sure. Tell so, us, Mike. Tell us, Mike. Yeah. <clears throat> hey, so how many are having a great day today? So have you ever wanted to quit? Have you ever have you ever have you ever gone really far in the quitting process? Have you ever given up on something? only to find out that you are almost at victory. I mean, that's another thing too about giving up. When you, when you, go, to, when you go to quit, sometimes you don't realize how close you are to, to victory. And uh, you know what's crazy? I was thinking on the way here this morning, um, I was driving and I was just thinking, you know, this isn't like, you know, when you, you get somebody that just easy, kind of peasy, kind of handles things, kind of like just real peacefully, like a Hallmark movie, you know what I mean? Like, like a Hallmark, this isn't like a Hallmark, like, hey, listen, it's all going to work out. Let's just all, you know, kind of keep things even, Steven, right? This is, sometimes it's a lot messier than that. You know what I mean? Sometimes it's a lot messier than that. And, you know, there's a real desire to, to give up. And so we're going to talk about some things today, um, I think, that are help you. And, you know, I'm going to give you some, start off by giving you some statements that maybe you weren't thinking of, maybe you haven't thought of about quitting. And let me give you the first one here. This is going to, I think this is really going to, really going to speak to you. Wanting to quit is a sign of success. So wanting to quit is a sign of success. Does that make sense to you? Wanting to quit, not quitting. <laughs> wanting to quit is a sign of success. Well, there's that old saying that um, things worth having are worth fighting for. Mm -hmm. So I think if, you know, life was, you know, tiptoeing through the tulips and everything was butterflies and rainbows it wouldn't allow us to appreciate the successes right because everything would just be like flat ground so we have to appreciate them so I think that's true like that's really is a sign of success um, is that you're feeling those resistance because if everything comes easy to you it's kind of like you don't appreciate it mm. yeah by the way, I, you were right, I think, about the Control-Alt-Delete. Someone said it. Oh. Uh, I think Elisa said it shuts down unresponsive. We'll go back to the comments. Rewind. What does it say? It shuts down. Uh, unresponsive programs. Unresponsive Whoa. programs. Whoa. Does it do that? From now on, <clears> when <throat> you start going down a path, I'm going to be like, Control-Alt-Delete. <laughs> uh, unresponsive. <laughs> You're not responding the way I want. So I'm just going to Control-Alt-Delete you. Whoa. I love it. <laughs> You know Not out right? of just wow, shut you shrill. down. That was he shrill. said that shut you down. <laughs> That's awesome. So wanting to quit is a sign of success. So let me let me say. I guess let me explain that. Greater attack comes to those who experience greater success. You've heard the phrase "new levels, new devils," and you know Paul even said in the Word, he said, "I, you know, I, I'm going from glory 
to glory. And as you're as you're rising in life, as you're growing in life, as you're as you're you know doing things more and more for the Lord, as you're seeing success in your family, in your marriage, in your life, as you're beginning to accomplish things. See, the enemy's not interested in somebody who's doing nothing. He's already got you where he wants you. And if he can just keep you void, right? Null and void, then you know, then then he's then he's won the battle. But wanting to quit is a sign of success because you wouldn't want to quit if you weren't experiencing battle. And greater attack comes to those who experience greater success. And and so that's something I think that'll really help you this morning. Wanting to quit is a sign of success. Let me give you another one. The more you have to quit, the more you want to quit. You know, so so I'm, let me just say this two, twofold there. You know, um, there's a cost and there's a price to pay. And so anybody out there that just says, man, you know, I'd, I'd love to have this. Or you see this particular person that maybe you, um, you, you, you aspire to. Or maybe there's a mentor in your life or, you know, your pastor or, you know, some somebody in your family. You look at him and like they got all the breaks and, you know, they just, there's just so many things going right in their life. And, you know, there's there's more to it. And I'm going to tell you that, that you can get more and you can have more and you can accomplish more. But the more you have to quit, the more you want to quit. Let me just say this. The higher you go, the lonelier, the riskier, and the mo- more vulnerable you become. I'm going to say that again because you have to get this today because some of you don't understand why you, you know, you, you, you would, you're on a mountain or you're in an area where you've experienced success in, in whatever that looks like to you, whatever scope or, or, you know, I'm not speaking financially. I'm speaking in all aspects, whatever success looks like to you. And you're like, I've really accomplished this, but why do I want to quit so bad? Because the higher you go, the lonelier it gets, the higher you go, the riskier it gets and the higher you go, the more vulnerable you become. And the easier, by the way, it becomes to shed yourself of that heavy load and quit. Because you're carrying it and you're like, you know, at some point you're like, all I've got to do is just, I mean, I just got to, I just got to hit release on this thing. You know, I just got to, I just got to, I just got to let this go. And, and it's easier to shed yourself of that heavy load and quit. And so too much is at stake. Can I just say this for you and I to give up now? Too much. For great is your reward if you keep going. And so, you know, um, understand that the enemy doesn't ever stop. And again, new levels, new devils. Really what he's doing at that point is he's, he begins to point out how, when you're, when you're on your way up, he begins to point out how hard it is to make it up. When you're, when you're, when you're up and you're carrying a load, he just, all he does is shift his focus on how heavy that load is. Wow. How heavy is that load? How how, how hard is that? How much responsibility is that? How, how lonely are you? How much of a risk is that? How vulnerable, you know, and so he begins to point those things out. And can I just say this? It's too much. There's too much at stake to give up now. And then, you know, the reward that you thought this was the reward, but I got news for you. God has so many lives at stake and that, that are, that are, that that's the reward. And because he's always attaches himself in the purpose is always attached to people and the lives of the people that are going to be transformed and changed. And so can I just say this? Another thing, you know, to really understand is that, that this is the scripture. This isn't some mumbo jumbo that somebody says as a believer, just to make you feel better that the Bible says that Jesus, he, he will not give you, God will not put on you more than you're able to handle. He'll always make a way of escape. So I, I, I got news for you. You can handle what you're walking through. You can handle what you're carrying as long as you stick with him. Amen. So the higher, the more you have to quit, the more you want to quit. So keep in mind this title of this. I think we have to go back sometimes and remind the title constantly this week. What to do when you want to quit. Like, I mean, if you, if you're sitting here now and you're like, man, I can't believe that David is talking about this and him and Diane, I can't believe these people are commenting on this. I can't believe who, man, what are you guys made of? We're, we're, we're King's kids. Well, I mean, if you are made of something different and you never want to quit, then I'd invite you here to the studios tomorrow and you can sit with us and you can do the show because I'm going to tell you, I don't, I haven't met anybody that's ever not wanted to quit. That's done anything worth doing for the Lord. You know, I, I'm kind of thinking of, of a race, someone's running their race, and there's that person that's lagging behind, and then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, adrenaline kicks in, and they just, like, take it into overdrive. I think that, you know, we all go through those seasons, but we got to find that point at some 
place that we allow adrenaline to push us. Um, you know, when I, I don't run on the treadmill very often anymore because my knees bother me, but I can remember when I was trying to like increase my time, I literally, if people could hear conversations in my brain, like I literally, would, like while I was on the treadmill and going, you know, either speeding it up or putting the incline, like I'm literally talking to myself, like you can do this. You got this. Like five more minutes, two more minutes, one more minute. Like I'm literally talking to myself. And here's the thing. You have a God. You're not alone in those seasons when you're feeling that way. You feel like you, you're either either lagging behind or maybe you're in the head of the race, right? Wherever you're at, you can be at the end of the race and feel like wanting to give up because you feel like there's no way I'm going to get to the end. But at the other side, you could be at the front of the line, stretching yourself, knowing that you're closer to the you know, the finish line and be wanting to give up, which is interesting because the people in the middle are still just trying to find their place in the race, right? But the you, the frontliner and the back end person bringing it up, both of those people are experiencing the thought process of wanting to give up. One is like giving up because I don't think I have it in me to finish. And the other one is also having the same thought process like I don't think I'll make it to the end for a different reason. So that's kind of interesting because no matter where you're at in that race, if you're in the front or the back, you're closer to you know your victory or you're far away from it, you're experiencing those same thought processes and patterns. And I've never really thought about it that way. But it's when you're in that middle of the road Thus, I think when we have to be careful, when we're in that lagging part of our faith and we're, you know, just kind of coasting through, you know, we're not, we're not pushing to go beyond, but then yet we're not lagging behind. I think that's where the enemy comes in and kind of does some talking too, because we're not expecting it. But, um... I think it's just allowing adrenaline, but you're with, the Lord is with you. So even when you feel like you're alone, where I feel like I'm talking to myself on the tread, when, on the treadmill, I was talking to myself, really, I had a heavenly father that was with me and he was cheering me on. And so I think in those seasons, we have to tune into the Lord because if no one else is to the left or the right of us, he's with us. Like there's scripture that says he's before us, he's behind us. He's at our right hand, he's at our left hand, he's covering us, he's leading us. You know, so I, I feel like we have to always remember and put that in perspective that when we're having those seasons where we're wanting to give up, remember who is with you. He is surrounding you. And so talk to him. Yeah. Well, can I just say this? This is the third statement about quitting. This is gonna this is gonna take me saying it a couple of times for you to get it, and I want you to really hear this. You can enjoy the luxury of wanting to quit if you know you're not gonna quit. So, I mean, what she just said was, look, can I just say this? If you don't want to quit, are you pushing yourself hard enough? If you, if you don't want to quit, are you, are you doing everything that you can do with what God's given you? Are you giving God your best? Because the reality is you can enjoy the luxury of wanting to quit if you know you're not going to quit. I mean, can I just say this? Your history is one of finishing what you start. It's who you are. So it's okay to have those thoughts without worry because you know you're not going to quit. So can I just say the first thing you need to really understand about this is it's okay to feel like wanting to quit. It's okay to contemplate wanting to quit. It's just not okay to quit. So enjoy the luxury of wanting to quit. Enjoy the luxury of saying, I don't know if I can make this because that's what's going to stretch you. It's what's going to increase you. It's what's going to enlarge you. And I'm going to tell you, there's a lot of things in life that a lot of times in life and a lot of places in life Or I looked and I said, I can't do this, you know, and I'm talking about things where, you know, I I had God involved in in my life and, you know, I can't do this. And, you know, the reality is you can't do this and, and, but he can do this. And the reality also is the fact that you should feel that way sometimes, because I think that what that does is it makes it, makes us realize all that much more that it's because of him, right? And it's only through him. And so enjoy the luxury of wanting to quit. Just know you're not going to. And let's look at a few ways here to, you know, how do we keep from quitting? Let's give you some practical steps, right? Some practical things on how to keep from quitting. And number one, you know, something that I've done, uh, you know, I do it pretty easy to be, to be honest with you. It comes to me easily, probably um, in a positive in in this respect. And then there's some negative things about it as well. Um, But burn the bridges behind you, you know, burn the bridges behind you. There's one key way 
to keep yourself from quitting. The, 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 so the first one is burn the bridges behind you. You know, I mean, look, just plan B is not an option. Going back is not an option. You know, if, if this gets hard, there's only, there's only two things I'm going to do. I'm going to sit here and die, and that's quitting, or I'm going to keep going. And understanding, ultimately, that God has given me His grace, His power, His provision, right, and His abilities to make it. He, he's not put more on me than I can handle. I can do this. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me right? I can do all things. If God's for me, who can be against me? Or greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. So burn the bridges behind you. And that leaves two choices. I'm just going to make it by the grace of God. I'm going to keep going and I'm going to have a testimony or I'm just going to sit here and die. But going back is not an option. So number one, how do you keep from quitting? Burn the bridges behind you. What do you think about that? Have you ever had to burn a bridge behind you? I don't know. I'm a little hesitant to burn a bridge because I might need it to get back to where I was <laughs> at because I made bridges. it wrong. <laughs> so I'm not real sure. That's the first thing I thought of. I guess make sure you're not going to need that bridge or it's not a good bridge. Make sure it's not you your, Make sure it. you're not burning the the way out or the yeah. way you know the way the the door. You know, I, I see what you're saying. But um, I mean, I'm talking about burning the bridges. I, I agree. I, I'm kind of in a season that I'm I'm limiting. Um, who has a sphere of influence in my life because, you know, I feel like I have a, I have to move forward and, and there's some people and, and situations and environments that will hold you back or keep you. And that's the crazy thing is we grow in the Lord. We may outgrow situations. We may outgrow people. We may outgrow habits. We may, you know, those things. So I think as we press on towards God and he's in he's drawing you and he's you know he's filling you and you're asking for more and he's and you're receiving sometimes we outgrow um you know where we've been so I think that's kind of that's where you're relating it to burning a bridge I'm thinking sometimes recognizing that we've outgrown something you know there's nothing more uncomfortable than if you've I'm sorry ladies if we've outgrown a pair of pants it's uncomfortable <laughs> It's it's making rolls and muffin tops, right? So sometimes we outgrow our situations and our people and our sphere of influence, not because maybe it's in bad. Those genes still are great genes, right? They're still good genes. We've just outgrown them. Just for someone them. else. Yeah, just for somebody else. So it's not that you're outgrowing those people because they're bad or that situation or that job or whatever. It's not that you've outgrown them. That's a bad thing. Just sometimes it's still good, right? But you you know, God's taking you somewhere else to a new level. So I think it's about recognizing where you're at in that race and in that, you know, when you're wanting to give up, where are you at? Is it that you're wanting to give up because really it's not that you, you just outgrown it, hmm. whatever that is. Only you can identify that it for you, what that is. What are you outgrowing? Because I think if we're really growing in the Lord, we're going to outgrow some things. Mm -hmm. That's good. How about this one? Don't tell anybody you want to quit. They may take you up on it. You know, be careful. She talked about your sphere of influence. Also, be careful who you're talking to. Be careful who you're speaking to. Be careful who you're venting to. You know, don't tell people you'll want to quit. They may take you up on it, right? So I think keep that between trusted individuals. It's okay to share that because, again, the, the want to quit is not quitting. And everybody on this planet, if they were honest, can relate to wanting to quit. And so, but be careful who you, because there's opportunistic people out there, right? There's people that can't handle that. There's people that aren't for you, you know, like God's for you. And uh, so if you're going to take it to somebody, take it to God. And if God's placed people in your life that you can trust, then, then that's a good scenario as well. I'm going to give you number three. Don't expose yourself to who you don't want to be. I'm going to say that again. Don't expose yourself to who you don't want to be. What do you mean, David? I mean, the people you associate with, you know? If you want to quit and you're having the temptations or the desires to want to quit, don't go around people who quit. Don't hang around people who, 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 who will encourage you to do it. Don't, you, you don't go back. Don't go back. See, that's the problem with the bridge, right? You can go back to the place where those people already 
see you as somebody different. You know, those people already see you as, as you know, as, you know, uh, they're already, there may be some jealous people. There may be some people that are settling there. There may be some, 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 some people that, you know, don't have your best interest, but then exposing yourself or associating with, you know, somebody who is going to encourage you to waller in the quit, encourage you to give up on it, tell you something like, you know, well, maybe that just wasn't the right. I never thought that was the right thing for you. I never thought that that was, you know, the best for you. So don't expose yourself to who you don't want to be. Don't go down, right, and, and go back and waller. And keep, keep in mind, you know, you're an eagle. I mean, you know, you don't have you don't have business hanging out with turkeys. Don't go back to the turkey bowl, right? And and you know, don't go back to the people and associate with the wrong people. Don't go back to the places and associate the wrong places because the reality is that's you're doing this as a way to get shrink back into a comfort zone. Can I just tell you, you outgrew. It's not comfortable anymore. You outgrew that place. You outgrew those people. And I'm not talking about ministering to them and witnessing to them and loving on them and being an example. But keep in mind, you can't be an example to them if you're going back because you want to quit. That's not a place of strength. They don't need to see that, right? Don't, don't expose yourself to the same books that you, you know, once gave up on or the same things that you used to place inside your spirit. So don't expose yourself to who you don't want to be. That's a great way to keep from quitting. Well, I mean, someone posted in there, Danny Cribbs, that forgetting what is behind, which is one of my favorite scriptures, forgetting what is behind, we press on toward the goal, striving for what is ahead. We take hold of this struggle. And I'm not sure what version that is, but the Lord gave me a message just in a make it happen a few years ago, forget, focus forward. We have to forget it. We have to focus ahead and we have to move forward. So again, those three key words, we got to forget, we got to focus, we got to move forward. We may be in our pause. So our our forgetting, okay, I'm going to burn the bridge. I'm going to, I'm going to forget it. And then I'm going to focus, which that's our pause. And then what's the next step in that forward? You have to take the next step forward. Don't let your pause be your memorial, right? You got to keep moving forward. So I think that you have to reevaluate. We all go through pauses. You know, we all have those standstills, but I think you have to evaluate when you're in that pause. I think you need to evaluate your surroundings to see what is necessary to take the other step. And that might be, you know, going on, you know, a new adventure, a new, a new, you know, a new business, a new opportunity. It may be, Hey, right now this season, I'm going to love these people from afar, but I can't have them inputting in my life in the same way. Evaluate where you're at when you're in a situation where you want to give up. I think it's really, really important to look around and see what evaluate and see what's in your life and how it lines up with the word of God for your life and that original, you know, that original goal, whatever that original goal was, am I making strives? Are my surroundings, um, ones that are going to encourage me and push me to be able to obtain the prize? Mm. Yeah, absolutely. Good stuff. Um, and I love that scripture as well. Philippians three, um, so let's look at number four here as we begin to wrap up in a few minutes. So lock yourself in so you can't quit. Lock yourself in. So stay focused on what you have as opposed to looking for a way out. And that's a really good, good deal. You know, um, there's a difference between a made up mind and a transfixed heart. And transfixed means cause someone to become motionless with horror. So I'm not talking about locking yourself in and freezing in sheer terror, right? I'm talking about having a made up mind, you know, not, not a, you know, you know, freezing out of fear and doing nothing. Right, and that's not the kind of lock in. I'm not talking about locking yourself up, isolating yourself, but lock yourself in, snap into place, make it, make your mind up, right, that you are not going to quit. You know, you're going to take it as it comes. You're going to listen. You may you may pause as we talked about yesterday. You may have to take a pit stop. You may, you know, you may have to you know rest for a little bit. But you're not going to have a transfixed heart. You're not going to be motionless and have fear and terror. But you're going to have a made up mind, and that made up mind is that I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Can I just tell you a couple of things I would have done differently? You know, bigger dreams and bigger risk. Bigger dreams and bigger risk. You know, there, there are times where, you know, in this, and it still can, but I mean, there's some times where I should have gone bigger because God wanted me to. Now, there were plenty of times where, for another lesson, I did things I shouldn't and I went for things I shouldn't, but there were also risks I should have taken that I didn't. And can I just say, you know, this and we're going to get into the middle of this uh, tomorrow and continue. Hopefully you're enjoying this, but don't quit on the things God has given you. Don't quit on the commitments you've made. Don't quit on your church. 
you know, don't quit on your faith. You know, this has been a difficult season in the world, right? COVID, political strife, division, even in the church and discouragement and depression have gripped so many people. But can I just say this? God is still in control in your purpose and your path. He's in control of both of those. Stay the course. This isn't just some, listen, this isn't motivational mumbo jumbo, right? But stay the course. God is working and you are part of that plan. Can I just tell you that if you're part, if the God of the universe considered you part of this plan, then how important are you? How important is his purpose in you? And how important is it that you don't quit? If the God of the universe included you in his plan, so God's working and you're part of that plan, push past the quitting points that come through discouraging circumstances that we're all going to face, by the way. We're all going to get, right? Push past past, right? The quitting points. And these are the, these are the things you have to push past. Push past the quitting points. D- d- push past the quitting points that, that, that discouraging circumstances will bring, that discouraging or unfortunate events will bring, discouraging and unfortunate people will bring. Push past the quitting points. Turn yeah. your eyes towards Jesus. Well, Alyssa Harvey put a thing like burn the ships, no option to go back without conquering. Uh, Matt, Matt Carney has a, a song, it's called Burn the Ships, I think. But all of this whole this whole week is also about, you know, intertwined in the scripture, Galatians 6, 9. And let us not grow weary of doing good for in due season we will reap if we do not give up. Amen. Amen. Turn your eyes towards Jesus. Amen. Trust him with your life, with your families. And I just say this, never give up, never quit. Sometimes things are going to get too difficult and you quit. And sometimes you have the strength, stamina and stomach to continue. And sometimes you don't. And sometimes we throw in the towel. And can I just say, don't let that be, don't let that be you. Amen. You guys enjoying it? What do you think? Good stuff. Terrific Tuesday. That was awesome, guys. Um, If you guys enjoyed that, be sure to share that out to your Facebook pages. If you're watching on YouTube, share it out to your social platforms. Share it out to your friends. Somebody needs to hear that. So be sure to go check it out. Um, We also have a daily encouraging text that go out every single day for free. Um, All you have to do to be a part of those is text EZGC to 813-522-3356. And to our live audience, if you can't make it to our live stream, um, we have a podcast. We have the podcast available on all streaming platforms. So you can go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, or wherever you listen to podcasts. We're pretty much there. Um, and we will be streaming every morning. If you are watching on Google, Apple, Spotify, or any other platform, we stream every morning, um, every weekday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be sure to join us. We'd love to engage with you guys in comments. Um, We also have our faith gear. Um, This is limited supply, so it's our merch. It's super awesome, super cool. So be sure to check that out. We have limited supply, so order it while you can. Um, And we have a featured Bible plan. If this has been speaking to you guys maybe on what to do when you want to quit, we have a Bible plan called Don't Quit. So it's going to go right alongside of this series, so be sure to read that. You can go to YouVersion Bible app, search David Villa Don't Quit, and you should be able to find it. And um, thank you so much for listening. That's all we have for you today. We hope you have a blessed day. And on that note, we out.